I grew up sailing on sailboats, and I was uh, not interested in anything with an engine. I took a ride in a, uh, a pits. I was immediately hooked. I sold my sailboat and bought an airplane. Growing up in San Diego, uh, one day I, my father took me to the uh, road races at, at Torrey Pines. In the background I saw uh, something that looked like a glider up in the air. And I said, boy, that looks like that would really be fun to do. He said, well, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. So he arranged for me to take my first uh, glider lessons for a 14-year-old kid. I don't remember being particularly frightened by, of, uh, of my solo and of, of early flights. Uh, I remember feeling like this was, this was pretty cool and pretty easy to do. It's, it's such a great sport and such a great uh, form of flying. It's arguably the purest form. Sterling Starr, my early mentor in, in soaring. Um, various people in San Diego in the early days of, of my youth uh, that lived there and worked at Convair or Ryan. Richard Bach, who, who bef before he wrote uh, his first little book, was a kind of a broke, itinerant barnstormer. I used to go barnstorming with him in Kansas. Uh, and he wrote this little book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. When you have something to do that either requires concentration or is certainly helped by it, then there's a kind of a, of a, a centering of your thoughts that it's hard to accomplish in any other way. It's sort of like driving a Ferrari across the country with no stop signs. The T2, the Buckeye, uh, which is an aerobatic jet, was a lot of, it was probably the most fun I've had in an airplane. Barnstorm Films is the name of my film company, and my wife and I named it that because of the nature of the business we're in, in the movie business, we, we're kind of barnstormers. We go from town to town looking for people to take for a ride of a metaphorical sort. Flyboys, which featured airplanes that aren't around anymore, and I actually got to fly one of those airplanes, which was probably a unique experience for any pilot to fly a World War II rotary engine airplane. I'd like to make another flying movie, but they're so hard to make. <laughs> to marshal the forces of the airplane, the weather, the pilot, the action, you know, it's, it's, and it's three-dimensional. When you're shooting a film, normally, uh, there are either obstacles to things, or there are limits to things, or there are, there are basically two-dimensional courses that the, a person or a car or anything else has to kind of negotiate. Uh, not so in the air, it's, it's, th it's like 3D chess. Well, I wish I knew Bob Hoover better. When he saw Flyboys, he paid me the, the highest compliment I've been paid for that movie, and it meant so much to me that, that he thought so highly of it. Like everyone else in aviation, I, I've been watching him open-mouthed for decades, and uh, that he should come down from on high and uh, anoint me was a great blessing. I think Aviator conjures up a commitment and a uh, consistency of, of skill and, and attitude. It's important to know where, where you come from and where, where your equipment comes from and, and what the incredible journey has been that designers and builders and experimenters uh, have taken. In, in the history of aviation. Flying does give you freedom. It, it gives you a, a, a kind of responsible freedom, which is kind of maybe the best kind there is. I think because of that, it's, it makes demands that there have commensurate rewards. You know, I don't, think, I don't think you get something for nothing, and I think that uh, one of the great pleasures of flying is, is the reward that you get from a job well done even though no one else is around to point it out.